Good morning ladies and gentlemen. This is a talk regarding amlyopia therapy. I've been treating adult amlyopia for the last 20 years and it's been a very challenging task. It's not only challenging for the patient but also the treating ophthalmologist. Both have to believe it strongly that the therapy will work. There are certain myths regarding amlyopia that it can only be successfully treated till the age of six to eight years. Some ophthalmologists around the world even attempt to amlyopia therapy till the age of 12 to 14. But after that, no one even bothers treating the elderly adults or the elderly patients. They are simply refused therapy. The other myth is that uh, part-time patching works as well as full-time patching. Therefore, ophthalmologists usually recommend a part-time patching schedule of two to three hours per day for two to three years. The third myth is that if any form of uh, amblyopia therapy has been attempted uh, in a child, like part-time patching, uh, penalization or atropine eye drops, then further therapy due at a later age will not improve vision in that child. In this lecture, I will attempt to show you that all these myths have been proven wrong and a successful therapy to restore 100% sight in an extremely amblyopic eye is possible at any age. What is amblyopia? It is a developmental defect of spatial visual processing occurring in the visual pathway. As you very well know, the visual pathway is a three neuronal pathway. It extends all the way from fovea along the optic nerve, optic tract to the striate cortex of the brain. People believe that the lateral geniculate body and striate cortex develop abnormally, but now latest studies have revealed that the cells in both the lateral geniculate body and the striate cortex, which are meant for binocularity as well as uh, related to the lazy eye, they are not dead. There is no cell apoptosis. Rather, these cells are shrunken because of disuse. So it is actually a disuse atrophy. So these shrunken cells, they can be made to work fully with strong, persistent, continuous stimulus. Studies have also shown that there is a strong neural integration between different parts of the brain that is the striate cortex is linked to the frontal cortex as well as the sensory cortex so any stimulus which stimulates all these parts of the brain will uh, will result in a quick recovery of vision in my latest research, which was published uh, on 824 adult cases that were fully treated of severe amblyopia, I found that reading is that stimulus which integrates all parts of the brain and it leads to extremely good and quick recovery of the whole visual system. What does an amblyopic eye perceive? So these figures show that uh, in the zebras, if you look at the zebras, the blurred vision is that of the amblyopic eye, which is mildly or moderately amblyopic as compared to the clear zebra that is perceived by the good eye. Similarly, in severe amblyopia, the severity of blurred vision is extreme in the lazy eye as compared to nearly good vision in a moderately amblyopic eye. As a result, the extremely blurred vision from the amblyopic eye is blocked by the brain in favor of the clear vision of the good eye 
and gradually the signals as well as the neuronal pathway of the amblyopic eye is blocked and the cells become shrunken. So when a patient comes to you with poor vision in one eye and uh, good vision in the other eye, you have to ask yourself that uh, is it really amblyopia? And why in this patient? Is it an isometropia or strabismus or it is stimulus deprivation? So you have to examine the patient fully and you will need answers to all these three questions because unless the cause is treated, you cannot attempt amblyopia therapy. How does an isometropia result in amblyopia? Usually, grossly, and isometropic patients have a, a mild refractive error in the good eye or even none. And so they see clearly without any correction with the good eye. But in the grossly amblyopic eye, they have a gross refractive error like myopia of four to five diopters, uh, hypermetropia of one to two diopters more than the good eye or astigmatism of 1.5 diopters more than the good eye. So the uncorrected amblyopic eye sees blurred vision all the time and gradually this blurring uh, causes uh, blockage by the brain and the lazy eye results. Any form of strabismus with visual axis misaligned between the two eyes will result in amblyopia and stimulus deprivation like a corneal opacity, cataract, vitreous opacity or any problem with the fovea will result in stimulus deprivation. Regarding any retinal problem, if it is treatable, then the amblyopia is treatable. But if it is an organic problem in the retina, a scar or atrophy of the fovea or the optic nerve or optic disc hypoplasia, then this is labeled as untreatable. It's very important to understand the link between strabismus and amblyopia. And I will only have a foveal fixation if the visual and the optical axis are aligned. As the eye diverges in or out, the foveal fixation is lost and poor vision results. And as the amblyopia worsens, so does the angle of strabismus. So any attempt at strabismus management, the first step is to correct the vision of that eye. The important question now arises that since it is such a difficult job to treat amblyopia, so why bother treating it? It's the number one cause of monocular visual loss in adults. This is by the WHO. Its prevalence is 2% in the general population. And since the visual loss is treatable, so why not treat it? As a person with such a lazy eye is prone to blindness in the good eye from trauma, infection, cataract, glaucoma. So why not make an attempt to give him two good eyes? How to approach a patient with amblyopia? The foremost is to record the visual acuity in that person. So there are various methods of uh, recording the vision according to age of the patient and the details of which are all given in various books. If there is a difference of visual equity of two lines between the two eyes, then this is labeled as amblyopia. Any difference smaller than this is ignored. The pattern of fixation preference by the two eyes will, should tell you that one eye is the dominant eye. Dominant means that the vision in that eye is better than the non-fixing eye. 
The pattern of fixation preference is uh, very important to diagnose amblyopia in small children. What you can do is ask the parent to cover the fixing eye of the child while you observe if the child allows the parent to do that. If the child starts crying or moves the parent's hand away from the eye, then the other eye is amblyopic. On the other hand, if the child allows the parent to cover one eye and he starts looking at you or your light or the fixing toy and keeps looking at it with interest and then you ask the parent to remove the toy. If the child keeps on holding the fixation with the eye you're testing, then there, that eye is not obviously amblyopic. On the other hand, if the fixation immediately changes over to the good eye when the hand of the parent is removed then this eye is moderate to severe moderately amblyopic how to grade the amblyopia that if there is no fixation preference by and fixation is held with either eye on cover test then there is no amblyopia it's grade zero if fixation is held with either eye after removing the occluder and it is maintained through a blink but not after an eye movement then mild amblyopia is present of grade 1. If fixation is held briefly after removing the occluder but then it switches to the other eye after a blink then there is mild to moderate amblyopia of grade 2. If fixation is held only for a few seconds after removing the occluder, then it is grade 3. And if fixation immediately shifts to the other eye as soon as the occluder is removed, then the, that eye is densely amblyopic of grade 4. The presence and type of strabismus is then assessed by a Hirschberg test and by the a cover and alternate cover tests. A description of all these uh, tests are given in the books as well as in uh, my strabismus book. We'll try to cover it in the next lecture. And then you look for the eccentric fixation which is done with a visual scope and then refraction of the child. If the child has an esotropia or an esophoria then it is important to dilate fully with an atropine for three days and then do the refraction. On the other hand, if the child is orthophoric or has uh, an exophoria or an exotropia, then refraction with cyclopentolate is sufficient. Following which, a complete ophthalmic examination is done of the anterior segment and detailed examination of the fundus including the fovea and documenting whether the fovea is normal or not because any visual improvement will depend upon the status of the fovea. How to manage amblyopia? It is a stepwise approach that there are three steps. What is first one is the correction of the refractive error and constant spectacle wear for four to six weeks it's been shown in various studies that it can improve vision to 20 to even 50 percent in mild cases of amblyopia. An important point regarding the correction of refractive errors is that if the eye is isotropic or isophoric, then a plus correction should be given. On the other hand, if the eye is orthophoric, or exotropic or exophoric then a minus correction needs to be given. Then the, the patient should wear the refractive glasses constantly and then re-examine after a period of four to six weeks. If there is improvement in vision then he should just continue with the glasses for another four weeks and reassess. If further improvement in vision with the glasses alone has stopped, then at this time, the patching of the good eye is started. 
at this stage before starting the patching it's important for the ophthalmologist to explain to the patient as well as the parent that the patching alone will not work unless the amblyopic eye is made to work and as we discussed previously that made to work means active use of the eye for reading writing and then the computer games so how does occlusion therapy works occlusion blocks the inhibitory influence of the good eye over the amblyopic eye what this means is that brain favors the neuronal connections of the good eye and transmission will start from the bad eye as long as the good eye is blocked. I only recommend full-time occlusion therapy and uh, the standard is one day of occlusion per year of age. What this means is that if the child is seven years old, then he will wear the patch full day. Full day means all waking hours putting the patch on as soon as he gets up in the morning and then removes the glasses and the eye patch when he goes to bed and then the near visual act activities like coloring reading large font books and computer games for at least three to four hours per day Active parental involvement and supervision is mandatory as children have to be supervised. They cannot make to sit and work with the bad eye while blocking the good eye. That is a very tedious job and someone has to be there to motivate and inspire the child. Only with this therapy a rapid visual improvement is noted. And this is the correct way of uh, patching. The commercially available patch is worn over the good eye and along with the glasses. And the child has to work through the glasses whole day. So how does occlusion work? As I've already explained, the visual pathway is a three neuronal pathway. The brain favors the smooth connections of the good eye in comparison to the lazy eye. So only when the vision of the good eye is blocked by an eye patch, the nerve impulses travel through the broken connections of the amblyopic eye. As soon as the patch is removed, the brain starts favoring the good eye in comparison to the lazy eye and the improved connections in the amblyopic eye again starts to break. This happens every day with part-time patching and the resultant improvement in visual equity in the lazy eye is minimal with part-time patching. On the other hand, if the good eye vision is blocked throughout the day, every day for two months, then you can very well understand how quickly the neuronal connections will establish in the lazy eye and there will be a smooth transmission of impulses from the lazy eye to the brain and how quickly the vision will improve in the amblyopic eye, no matter how grossly, severely amblyopic it is. So the idea of this discussion is to tell you that only the occlusion, full-time occlusion therapy will work. Part-time patching will never be able to restore sight 100% because of this continuous breakup going on every day. This is just a diagrammatic representation that as soon as the patch is removed from the good eye the brain will favor the clear zebra instead of the blurred zebra or the clear Snellen's chart instead of the blurred Snellen's chart and the fixation will shift to the good eye 
as soon as the patch is removed. Only when the good eye is patched, the brain will continue to focus fully on the vision of the amblyopic eye. This is just to show you in grossly strabismic eye along with severe amblyopia, the eye will fixate as long as the patient is wearing the patch over the good eye. But as soon as the patch is removed, the amblyopic strabismic eye will go out again and vision is blocked in that eye. Another example, she's a 27-year-old girl with the gross uh, exotropia as well as uh, am severe amblyopia. As long as she wears the patch over the good eye, the vision is favored in the amblyopic right eye because the right eye is now held straight with foveal fixation. As soon as the patch is removed, the eye will go out again and the brain will start using the good eye and ignoring the bad eye again. And this will happen daily with part-time patching. So you can give good result in this patient with severe strabismus and severe amblyopia only by full-time occlusion therapy. Now this is extremely challenging because the, if the vision is so poor, it's very difficult for such an adult who is actively involved in daily life to give up all the activities to keep his life or her life on hold and start working fully and focusing on the lazy eye. But this has to be done if you want to give good results following strabismus as well as amblyopia. Another adult patient with severe amblyopia and uh, exotropia, first her vision was improved in the lazy eye and then she had surgery. Now since the vision is equal in both eyes, her eyes will hopefully be straight for the rest of her life. There is a strong sensory locking system in the brain which locks both eyes into alignment and fusion and this only occurs if the vision of both eyes is equal. So the both eyes will stay straight into alignment for the rest of this patient's life. This figure just shows the patterns of visual fixation in amblyopia where the central is the foveal fixation and if that is present then a person is able to attain 100% visual acuity. This can be assessed by, on a visual scope, which is a small circle present in the light of a, a direct ophthalmoscope. You shine the light through the pupil and ask the patient to focus on that central circle. And then you assess whether that circle is focused on the fovea or on one side of it. The further this circle is focused away from the fovea, the poorer the visual potential of that eye, unless you break this eccentric fixation and shift it back to the fovea. Breaking the eccentric fixation is extremely difficult task, but it's possible. It can be done if the child or the uh, adult wears the eye patch over the good eye and focuses through a pinhole from the lazy eye. That patient has to be made to work through that pinhole. Only then the eccentric fixation will be broken and it will take a long time or double the time than without an eccentric fixation to improve vision in such a patient, but it can be done. I have done it in many cases and surely you can do it as well. I'm here to help you. How to supervise such patients who are having a full-time patching program? So the follow-up is uh, every two weeks. Parents have to be involved and motivated otherwise a successful outcome is impossible to achieve. 
the child or the adult is uh, brought to the clinic wearing the patch and then vision of the amblyopic eye is measured for both distance and near then the patch is removed from the um, uh, from the good eye and fixation preference noted for both near and distance and then the vision of the occluded eye is noted for younger children parents are taught to observe the fixation preference every day when they put the patch on in the morning daily the problems encountered in full-time patching is the availability of an eye patch but they can be easily available Allergic reactions and particularly a mild rash is commonly observed during hot season and hot summers, humid climate. A mild rash can appear under the patched area that can easily be managed by a mild steroid cream applied at night when the patch is removed. Compliance is the single most important factor that ensures the successful outcome and only strongly motivated parents will be fully compliant to patching and follow-ups so you have to involve the parents and the patients counsel them properly make extra time for them and make them understand that you are restoring their sight for the rest of their lives and strabismus surgery will fail if this is not done any form of surgery will fail this is a 16 year old child who had uh, mild strabismus with uh, severe amblyopia so he was uh, only given glasses and patching fully corrected vision is fully corrected with glasses and there's no need for surgery. similarly another patient with strabismus amblyopia surgery was not uh, done but only managed with patching and uh, mild uh, prescription of glasses up to 15 degrees of strabismus can be straightened by correcting the vision and there is no need for surgery another adult in whom gross strabismus and amblyopia was first managed with glasses and patching and then surgery was done another patient in whom uh, First, the vision was restored and then surgery was done. So what conclusions can we draw from this talk? That do not give up on your patients. Improvement in vision is possible in every patient. It the, this fact has to be remembered that both eyes will remain straight after strabismus surgery in a patient only if their vision has been restored fully treating adult amblyopia is extremely rewarding you can only do it if you firmly believe that the therapy works and as you have seen through the lecture that only full-time occlusion therapy will restore 100 percent sight and lock the eyes by sensory fusion mechanism into the brain this, you can only advise your patients to achieve that if you have strongly motivated them and inspired them to block vision of the good eye and put their life on hold for the next two to three months and then only they will get a good, normally working, healthy eye. So only strongly motivated doctors can inspire and motivate parents and the patients to do that. All this is given in my books and uh, you can go through it. Thank you very much. These are my books and uh, these are available in the market and uh, or you can order it. This book uh, shows a detailed management approach as well as all the steps how to manage amblyopia. Thank you very much.